Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, we talk with a local muralist who feels creating public art is a big responsibility. Learn about a performing arts group who strives to enrich, empower, and entertain. Witness a pop-up floral installation. And hear from an inspirational recording artist. This and more right now on Broad and High. Welcome to Broaden High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. Artist Sarah Hout admittedly has more clothes in her wardrobe with paint on them than not. Her love of color, flowers, and critters is very evident in her work. We stopped by some of her recent mural sites to talk about her process and passion for inspiring people. I ended up going to art college uh, after high school. I'd had some roommates that um, had done some mural work and I thought, I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, long story short, some doors opened for me to be able to, to do that. And I quickly realized like, this is a really good space for me. You know, not only am I able to create things that have big impact, I'm also able to build relationships with people and not just work in my basement in the dark by myself and be an island. <laughs> um, I really am built to be around people, so. so it was a good fit. Every project was different, you know? Subject matter, you know, I'm working uh, in kids' libraries one day, a restaurant the next, somebody's home the next. I mean, I love impacting a space. I love creating a space that a lot of people can walk through and have it be a safe place for them, a place where they can breathe, take a deep breath. The process that I generally go through um, is first of all, you know, having that conversation with the client. Um, what are they trying to accomplish? You know, I have to think about um, the functionality. I have to think about the demographic that's gonna view it. I have to think about context, you know, all of these things. I like to go into the space to feel it out. I like to see who my neighbors are, what's around me, you know, and uh, just really process like an image that is going to not only be beautiful, um, but functional as well. So those are two important things for me. Once we have decided on a design and I've you know created some images for them to approve, then uh, as far as putting it on the wall goes, there's several different ways to do that. You can, it depends on you know what kind of surface it is and how much room there is between the surface uh, to do things like project or um, if you can't project then grid or you know do a, a squiggly, squiggly grid or whatever they're called um, and just freehand it, you know. Sometimes I just have to freehand it. And then, yeah, all different kinds of paint and spray paint and latex paint and depends again on the surface and how much time I have and <laughs> the look we're going for. Um, but kind of start to finish, that's the big picture. There was a lot of spray paint involved with the Hilltop mural. Um, that mural was uh, probably the first mural I've done that was pure spray paint and uh, definitely the biggest mural that I've ever done with that amount of spray paint. We ordered a little over 44 colors. And each color, there were like six cans. So there are well over 200 cans of spray paint involved. So with the Free to Be mural, it started off as something where I'm creating and People are walking by, but they don't really see anything happening yet. They just see this girl, you know, with this big piece of equipment. Unfortunately, there were a lot of catcalls, you know. 
But once the art started to go up, all of a sudden people were engaging with the art. They weren't paying attention to this random girl that they were you know, curious or confused about. Um, but they were like, wow, like what's happening here? And the art was just starting to like take center stage and, you know, demand attention. It was just fascinating because the way people responded to me, it, it wasn't about the catcalls or me or whatever, but it was about like, wow, what a beautiful piece of art. And all of a sudden there was just this like air of respect <laughs> where there hadn't been previously. All of a sudden I hear from behind me, hey, is this your work? Are you painting this? And I was like, why, well, yes, I am. Her, like, her jaw was dropped. She's like looking at the mural, her jaw is dropped. Her daughter's eyes were huge. <laughs> and they're just staring at her, they're looking at me and staring at the wall. <laughs> and they're like, this is amazing, I love it. And uh, the little girl was like, mommy, can I have my picture taken with the artist? You know, it was so precious. <laughs> I think, you know, it was like, she saw someone that looked like her and that was like really important. You know, we, we need to see people that look like us. The woman in the mural, her name is Francesca Miller. She is an artist here in Columbus. She's also a very good friend of mine. And um, I've had the privilege of getting to know her for about four years. Uh, but one thing I love about Francesca is her resilience and um, the way that she just has determined to choose hope and choose joy and choose, you know, all those things that we desire. For me, public art is a big responsibility. And um, I'm not trying to just create images that look cool, you know, or modern or whatever. Um, to me, it's about, um, you know, what's the purpose of the space? Um, really thinking about the context and creating images that um, are not coming from a place of anxiety or angst or, you know what I mean? Just to like, for the sake of coolness, you know, for me, public art, uh, it's really important to create images that are gonna have some sort of positive effect on the people they're gonna encounter it. When I get these opportunities, I'm just over the moon honored, you know, that I'm being trusted with something that has the potential to be hugely, you know, inspiring, ins impactful, inspirational, all the eyes. <laughs> and to know that commuters are gonna see it every day or um, people in the clubhouse get to see it every day, and it actually can influence like their mood and their day and their emotions. Like it's just, it's just a huge honor. My hope for the people that walk by would be that the mural would inspire them to keep moving forward. That the mural would be a place of pause and like realignment. Like, okay, this is actually who I am or what I can be. Like my circumstances don't define me. You know, I'm so much more than that. I hope that people will look at it and just feel some spark of hope to keep moving forward. To see more of her work, check her out on Instagram at Sarah the Hout. Next, we head back into the kitchen for another installment of Kate's Quick Bites. This time, we learn about a performing arts organization that can describe themselves in four words. Voices raised, lives changed. With me today is Brayton Bollenbacher, the Artistic Director of Columbus Gay Men's Chorus. Brayton, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So why don't you tell us something about the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus that people who aren't familiar with it may not know. Yeah, so we are in our 33rd season of Voices Raised and Lives Changed. And, you know, we've had this evolution in this time because when we started, we were back in the, the early 90s, which of course was in the height of the HIV AIDS epidemic. And now we're here 33 years later and we are a TTBB chorus, which means tenor tenor, baritone, bass. Oh, I think that's something people might not know. Yeah, they probably don't know that. But at the same time, it also, you don't have to be gay, you don't have to be a man, mm -hmm. and you don't have to live in Columbus to be in the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus. Okay, that's good to know. I like how inclusive it is, open yeah, to everybody. Yeah, it's really great to see the evolution of the chorus and really see how we are adapting to really what the LGBTQ community needs right now. 
That's amazing. Well, I'm excited to get cooking with you, or mixing, I guess, in this case. Why don't you tell me what we're going to make? So we're making cowboy caviar today, which it was one of my favorite TikTok find recipes. <laughs> um, and the nice thing about it is that I'm a vegetarian, and I often find that when I go to parties or when I go to restaurants, there aren't a lot of good vegetarian options because they don't have a lot of good protein. But this have, has lots of protein in it, and it's super flavorful and super colorful, and everybody loves it. I love it. It's so easy to snack on. It's so good. I can't wait. <laughs> so why don't you tell us uh, what ingredients we'll need to get started. So here's what you'll need today. Two to three bell peppers of any color, one red onion, six ounces of feta cheese, three mangoes, cilantro, a can of black beans, a can of chickpeas, two cups of corn, two cups of pineapple, one jalapeno, candied jalapenos, and then my favorite, the corn chips for dipping. For the dressing today, You'll need three limes, a fourth cup of olive oil, a fourth cup of white wine vinegar, two to four tablespoons of spicy honey, and then one to two tablespoons of taco seasoning with sugar, salt, and pepper to taste. Okay, this all sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. What's our first step? So we're gonna go ahead and mix all the stuff for the dressing mm -hmm. together. Um, so we'll start by just pouring it in. Okay, this, so we this just pour batch. it in. Yeah. All right, while we pour and whisk, why don't you tell me what can an audience member expect from a performance? Yeah, so um, the Columbus Cayman's Chorus has three different performing ensembles. So we have the large chorus, which right now currently has about 100 members. Um, and then we have a small audition ensemble called Vox. And then we have a small group called Illuminati, which is our sacred ensemble. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <clears throat> the large chorus and Vox do shows that are pop, Broadway, classical, kind of all mixed together with a yeah. different theme and usually in a theater setting. Um, and so you can expect to cry, to laugh, to really enjoy gay people on stage. That sounds amazing. Yeah, that's really fun. <laughs> um, and then you can uh, come to Illuminati, and we'll hold off on that oh, just one second. So good we, call. Yeah, we want to. I want to make sure we can taste, taste it. Taste it, yeah, oh my yeah, gosh, yeah. you're such a chef. Oh, don't tell my Chill. family that. <laughs> For Illuminati, though, they do this really cool thing where they go to a different uh, congregation once a month, on a, usually on a Sunday or a Saturday or Friday, whatever that service is, um, and they sing sacred music, So, which wow, is really cool. that's wonderful. Yeah. What a variety. It's really nice, and the nice thing about the chorus is that we have, um, not only is the music a variety with the genres, but we also have singers that are from 24 to 80 that oh are in the gosh. group. So it's a really cool intergenerational dialogue and musicianship that goes yeah. on. What mm -hmm. kind of singing skill should someone have? Like, they should already be... They gotta audition. Well, no. So, actually, the Columbus Gaiman's Chorus is open to everyone. Okay. So, you come in and you voice, and I'll put you in whatever section is best for you, and then we kind of help you do the rest. Oh, so, you wonderful. don't have to read music. You've, if you've never sung before, we will take you. As long as you can match pitch, you can sing with us. That's amazing. It's really great. I love All right. it. Okay. Ready to start putting some of this in? Yes. But I, I want your tasting expertise. Oh, I don't know about that. You probably... <laughs> You're probably better than I am. <laughs> it's looking good. Looks like a good dressing. And so you could probably make this ahead and then toss it all together. 100% you could. Uh, and the nice thing is that it does um, stay in the refrigerator mm -hmm. pretty uh, easily. So, oh, so you can use it, it forever, yeah. Nice. Make a little salad or something. I also like to put it on my hand oh my when gosh, I do it. Yeah, it's really good to hand. taste that way, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it good? Um, S it needs. Seasoning wise? Yeah, I think it needs a little more sugar. Okay. Mm hmm. All right, our beautiful dressing is all mixed together. Before we combine it with everything else, why don't you tell me a little bit about your mission? Yeah, so, you know, Voices Raised, Lives Changed is the overall mission of the organization. And so it's really important for us that we are really taking the social issues that are affecting LGBTQ people and finding ways to program about that. So my personal belief is that every chorus should have a mission moment in a concert. So whether that be you know, a couple of years ago, we sang a beautiful Mandarin piece because all the violence was going against Asian Americans during COVID. Or um, this concert, we're having a moment to talk about HIV AIDS again, you know, which is a common theme for, of course, our community. I think it's really important that we sing songs that are really relevant to what's going on in our singers' lives. And, you know, bring awareness to that through music to our audience that might not have any understanding of what's going on. That's wonderful. So people come for entertainment, but they also get to have that kind of connection with their community and understand, you know, what people are going through. That's wonderful. And there's no better way to feel than through music. That's so true. My goodness. And eating snacks. Yeah, also. I'm ready to eat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now what's our next step? I mean, we essentially mix it all together. We just put it all in a bowl. I can't wait. Let's yeah. do it. All right, I'll get some of this stuff out of the way. 
any particular order? We just rock and roll? Um, I think you just rock and roll okay. however you want. I would suggest maybe a little less cilantro until the very end. We don't end. dump it. Yeah, okay. and then just based on what you want. So. All, right. All right. All right. So here, uh, here, you do mango. Oh, yes. Okay. I'll do our beautiful pepper. It's so colorful. Well, that's how the gays roll. <laughs> it's like a pride flag in a yeah, bowl. That's right. I love it. All right, there go our peppers. Maybe some beans in there, yeah. Get our, all the chickpeas? Go yeah, ahead. put them all and in. Dump them. All in. I'm gonna get the black, the black beans. beans. Wait, tell me why regular jalapeno and candied jalapeno. I really like jalapeno. Well, fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think you can't have enough jalapenos. So. Should I dump these all in or are yeah, we being? Yeah, put them all okay. in. Put okay. them all we're, in. We're going to yeah. weep. It's going to be spicy. And then, well, do you like spicy? I do. Okay, good. I mean, so we're going to be okay. It's not pretty, but I like it. So <laughs> go ahead and put these all in. And sometimes it doesn't feel good, but <laughs> it, it's all great. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Onion goes in. All the feta? Yeah, all the feta. Oh gosh, this is so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Feta's the best. It's so good. Such a good cheese. And then this is our pineapple. Mm -hmm. The other nice thing about this recipe is that if somebody doesn't like something, they can easily can, take it out. Yeah. yeah. So. This is, I've seen cowboy caviar before, but not with this many delicious ingredients. Really? Yeah. The mango and the pineapple, that's so fun. We'll probably only do half. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay, fine. Great. This and is going to be a, a mixing just mix it together. situation. Mm -hmm. And then we just have to put the dressing on. Do you want to put the dressing on as sure. I mix? Should I drizzle as... Does the whole thing go on? The whole thing. Whole thing. Okay. Here, wait. Here we go. I'm going to have to like... There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty color. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And there it goes. Okay. And then I will mash it up together. Okay. And then we get snack on it. Mm-hmm. Now, you can choose whatever type of chips that you really want, mm -hmm. but I think that corn-flavored chips are always kind of the best way to go. You need a sturdy chip for this. You definitely need a sturdy chip. And it's good to have like a dip one, too. Okay. It looks beautiful. Do you, can you eat it right away? Should you let it sit in the fridge? Does you it can eat it right away. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We've had, I mean, we've had it before where we take it to parties mm -hmm. and we eat it at the party like the moment that we finish it and then we save it for the next like three days. And nice thing, it's got so much protein in it that it could also be a meal for yeah, you too. Yeah, absolutely. So. I feel like this kind of thing goes so fast at a party though. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everybody wants to have a dip, right? Right. So, and it's so different. It is. So and fresh. it's mostly healthy. It is. So. For the most part. It's just the chips that get us. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. Okay, great. <gasps> okay, so before we stuff our faces, okay. why don't you tell me what we can expect for the next 33 years of the Columbus Game Men's Chorus? <sighs> you know, it's a question. really big question. Ah, <laughs> I know. Um, so I think that, you know, I, I think that with all choruses and, you know, especially choruses that are LGBTQ, it's how are we continuing to meet the needs of our people? What is it going to look like to be a gay person in 30 years? You know, I mean, we've had kind of this honeymoon period since the last 15 years where being gay has been a lot easier. Will that continue? Will it not continue? And then our poor trans and non-binary friends are really going through a lot of stuff mm -hmm. right now with what, what's going on in, in schools and, and the public, um, you know, different politicians and what they're wanting. And so how do we benefit these people who who really need this community. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is how do we adjust to the changing music? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not singing the stuff from the 1950s anymore. What is that gonna look like? How are we incorporating things like TikTok or, or Zoom to rehearsals? And how do we deal if there's another pandemic? So right. I think it's, you know, it's just an ever evolving system that we're gonna have to figure out and change. And, we might not be called the same thing in 30 years. We might be called the same. I mean, who, who we knows? just have knows. I don't, maybe we'll be SATB. Maybe we'll be SSA. Maybe we'll be TTBB. Maybe we'll be Solist. Uh, 33 years is a lot, but I think it's as long as we're meeting the needs of our community, then we're doing what's right for our organization. And it sounds like your mission is headed in the right place. And we're lucky to have you in the community. Well, we love being in Columbus. It's such a vibrant spot for us. And, you know, there is no better place to be in the Midwest than Columbus. I agree. Uh, let's eat this. We got some chips over there. And now we just need to be like in scene and eat Great. it. No, yeah. okay, let's get in here. All right. All the flavors. I hope it's good. It's gonna be good. There's no way it can't be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Light and fresh. It's so, so yummy. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. all those flavors come together. Mm -hmm. The dressing is so zingy. The feta. And it's like too winner. much. Yeah, it's great. It's love it. Thanks for being here, Brady. Thanks so much for having me. To find out more, check out CGMC.com. New York florist Lewis Miller colors the city streets with thrilling pop-up floral arrangements. These flower flashes are meant to exude joy and beauty. Let's see how Miller and his team install one of these striking and seemingly spontaneous creations. 
Flowers were always part of my DNA. I come from a family of gardeners, but I went from landscape and horticulture to the flower world, and here I am. The flower flash was something that was kind of um, bopping around my brain for a while. It didn't have a name. It was sort of more this vague idea of how to take flowers and fuse them in an urban city environment. So it finally got to the point a couple years ago where I was very satisfied with business, things going super well, and kind of needing to feel creatively energized again, but also feeling the need in my own way to give back. I'm clearly surrounded by flowers on a daily basis, as are my clients, and we tend to get immune to how beautiful they are and what an expression of joy they are to people. And it's really about taking that, which is so beautiful and ephemeral, and kind of merging it with the texture and the grit of our urban city life and creating something that's very spontaneous, very fleeting, and sort of abstract. We spend a great deal of time, you know, really finding locations that feel New York first. So that combined with the season, what's looking good, and also the flower flashes are accumulation of old flowers from the flower market, stuff that's left over from the studio, and stuff that's uh, left over from events. So we have to work with that as well. These flashes happen very quickly. We plan it to a certain extent, then we just do it and see what happens. There's a little an anxious energy, you know, it's usually dark, a lot of times it's cold. Flowers are for New Yorkers. They are for the people, and I want people to take them and interact with them. Obviously take a picture, but take a blossom, take some home. New York is New York. All these people piled on top of each other. To me, you know, the two biggest luxuries in this city are nature and space. So the more that we can have these kind of soft moments of just beauty and joy for no other reason, even if it's for an hour or 10 minutes, this job is done. To learn more, visit lewismillerdesign.com. Ibri Yalo is a female recording artist in a male-dominated genre. Her songs and delivery showcase the strength and determination that has driven her to where she is today. Let's take a listen. talking die inside i hope you never get swallowed up by your nine to five and hate your job and hate your life and hate your kid and hate your man and hate yourself and hate your wife i hope you never die i'm talking more than fashion when i say be fly and way more than drugs when i tell you stay high and if it's toxic for you don't be scared to tell it bye 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 i hope you never die 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 I hope you find love as soon as you stop looking and hit you with blind love i hope that love was everything you thought love was i hope you always laugh i hope you learn to let it go if it's part of your past i hope you hug the tightest hold your head the highest in a room full of sun i hope you shine the brightest i hope you know i love you i hope your dreams come true i hope you realize your purpose and what you're here to do i hope you never die i hope you never die i hope you never die I hope you never die. I hope you find you and live in your truth and get what you deserve. I hope you know your worth. I hope you learn and remember to always put you first. I hope your car don't stop. I hope these songs don't flop. I hope you never stop climbing. I hope you reach the top. I hope you know God, like really know God. Even if you recognize in God is no God. Or praying to the sky, meditating, or recognizing God inside. I hope you never die. Never perish amongst the buried who won't really bury, but don't really know. Get digging holes, trapped in the marriage. With depression, I know when the camera realizing tongue is the weapon and the shield. I ain't being preachy, I'm being real. I ain't being preachy, I'm being real. I hope you never die. Uh, I hope you, I hope you. I die, I'm talking die inside.
To hear more, check her out on Instagram at ebriallo. Well, that's our show. Remember, you can find all of our stories online at WOSU.org, as well as on our YouTube channel. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com.